going to study some this morning in the book of Exodus, and it's concerning the uh, Moses and uh, the smiting of the rock. And there's a few things here that I'd like to, I'm sure everybody's read, it, knows, uh, but I, I was, I've been studying for the last few days, and uh, it's, it's some things that I had let get by me, and of course, we need to be reminded of, of what took place there, what it's a symbol of. And uh, in in the book of uh, Exodus, in the 16th, 17th chapter, and then also in uh, Numbers, we'll go there and read some later on. But in this one here, this is where that Moses uh, struck the rock. But before, you know, well, <coughs> let's go ahead and read here some in, in chapter 17, verse 1. And all the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness of sin. After their journey, according to the commandments of the Lord, had pitched in Rehadim, and there was no water for the people to drink. Sort of like today, there's not a whole right. lot going on out there. Man. Wherefore the people did chide to Moses and said, Give us water that we may drink. Moses said unto them, Why chide you with me? Wherefore do you tempt the Lord? Mm -hmm. You might remember this. It's a good thought. Uh, chiding, arguing, uh, bickering. Uh, you know, when we, when we get in that state of mind uh, and concerning a person, uh, maybe we, we want to slow up those slurs at uh, at a person, uh, uh, even the pastor or whatever, and saying, uh, you know, that he's uh, he's wrong about that or he's not doing that. Listen, uh, you're not doing it to him as much as you are to God. Right. God called that man. God called uh, everyone to say he called them. Amen. When you when you uh, say something against one of your brothers or sisters, uh, you're wrong, and uh, mm -hmm. you, you're you're uh, you're uh, tempting God, and uh, uh, God don't don't like this in a person, a Christian. So uh, remember this as you as you uh, as you live your life. But He says here in the third verse, and the people thirsted there for water, and the people murmured against Moses and said, Wherefore is this that thou hast brought us about Egypt to kill us and our children and our cattle and thirst with thirst? And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, What shall I do unto this people? They be almost ready to stone me. Now you notice Moses, one of the meekest men the Bible says it was, and he didn't holler at them, he didn't grumble about them, he didn't go to the Lord and, and say, uh, Hey, you know, and you can uh, move them out of the way because, you know, uh, one time the Lord stole Moses, he says, I'll just, I'll just do away with them all. Mm -hmm. I'll bring up another nation out of you. And Moses spoke up for him and said, no, you can't do that. But anyway, here Moses comes to the Lord, and he, he's telling the Lord of, that they're being about ready to kill him, but he didn't, he didn't criticize these people because, listen, he knew their condition. Right. He knew their thirst. He knew, and listen, you know, uh, even only in a fleshly need for water, when you get to the point that you're thirsty and your tongue is swelling and all these things, Listen, you'll do things and, and, and things that, that are not right. Mm -hmm. And it's the same way when, when, when the devil gets to working in you. Uh, you'll say things, you'll do things that you don't really mean. You right. Know, but the thing of it is, this old flesh and nature gets out of, out of control sometimes by the devil's temptation. But here, he, he, he cries out to the Lord. And the Lord said to Moses, Go on before the people and take with thee the elders of Israel. The elders. Notice, and thy rod wherewith thou smote the river, take in thy hand and go. Go. Behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock in Horeb, and thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. Notice here in this, it doesn't even say it don't say anything about them drinking the water after he did this. But over in First Corinthians, you'll read what that they did all partake of that water. But anyway, what I wanted to bring out here was this morning this rod that Moses had. Now over in in the fourth chapter of Exodus, 
we see this rod again and what uh, it becomes. In chapter 4, verse 1 of the book of Exodus, and, the, and Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not hearken to me. Now this is where, and you know that, that the Lord told Moses he wanted to go and lead his children out of Egypt. And, uh, the, and Moses says, No, they won't hearken to me. They won't listen. Nor, uh, nor hearken to my voice, for they will say, The Lord hath not appeared unto thee. And the Lord said unto him, What is it in thy hand? And he said, A rod. And he said, Cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. Now, again, we want to look, use this word serpent. If you remember in the book of Genesis over there, where that... Uh, the serpent was more substantial than all the other animals. And there was a curse put on Adam, there was a curse put on Eve, and there was a curse put on the serpent. And so we see here that this, this rod here became, becomes a judgment. It's a, it's a serpent. The serpent, was, the serpent was to crawl on the ground and, and eat the dust of the earth. And so the rod becomes a a, a type of judgment. Right now, we see here, <coughs> as here, as we're studying back over in 17, and the Lord, in verse 5, and the Lord said unto Moses, Go on before the people, and take with thee the elders of Israel, thy, and thy rod, wherewith thou smotest the river, and take it in thy hand, and go. Now, here is where what we're seeing here this morning is a type of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ because the rock itself is Jesus Christ. The, the rod that Moses spoke, smote the rock with was the curse that was put on Jesus Christ and I don't mean no disrespect in saying that but there was a, a thing that he would be the sacrifice for the sins of the world. And in order to be the sacrifice for the sins of the world, Jesus Christ had to come to this world and he had to die for the sins of, the, of, of all those that God would choose to accept. And so this smiting, and we'll, re, we'll read in uh, Isaiah 53 just in a few minutes about this smiting, uh, but it was a type of... of the death, burial, and resurrection, or the death of Jesus Christ. Now notice here, he says, and the Lord said unto Moses, go before the people and take with thee the elders. And notice in, in verse 6, behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock in Horeb. Now, here is, here is the picture of Moses there with the rod. The rock out there in front of him is Jesus Christ. Amen. And up on top of that rock is God. Now, you remember when Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Because Jesus, or before God, was smiting Jesus Christ, his son. And this had to be done in order for that, that sin to be removed that had that had deceived Adam and Eve, it had to be done that way, whereas we would have some way, some uh, relief or some way to escape the punishment of hell. Amen. He, had, he had to die that death, and God put his approval upon it in, in, in that this was the only thing that could do that. And so God says here, he says, Moses, you go down there to that rock, and you smack that rock, and he says, I'll be standing there on top of it. And you can see the picture of, G of, of God turning his back to Jesus Christ when he said, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? Because, listen, the, all of those, he says he called for the elders of Israel. All of those people were around there and God was looking upon that sinful thing and upon that sin that was on Jesus Christ's back and he could not look upon sin. Right. And so he turned and he turned his back and, and, and this is this is the picture of that. And so he said here in uh, I will stand before thee upon the rock in Horeb and thou shalt smite the rock 
and thou shalt come water out of it that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. Now, we want to see something that come out here. It wasn't the blood of Jesus Christ. And this water will never typify the blood of Jesus Christ because <coughs> if you'll notice when Jesus Christ was was crucified and the, and the Roman soldier stuck the sword in the uh, side of Jesus, forthwith come water and blood. And so this water is a, is a type of the precious Word of God given as a gift by the Holy Spirit to all of those that would accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. This word, this word is true, and this is, this is what this is what comes forth out of Jesus' mouth while He walked here upon this earth, and and the prophets, I mean, and the uh, the ones that followed Him wrote these words down, and He and He also let the old prophets write these things down. And in the book of Isaiah, <clears throat> I want to read this to you if you'll if you'll bear with me just a minute until I get there. But in, and you know you read Isaiah 55, uh, 53, I'm sorry, uh, if I can find it real easy. Isaiah 53, who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. He hath no more form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him there see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow and of acquaintance with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He is despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our grief and carried our sorrows Yet we esteemed him, or valued him, stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. And so when, you know, when I, when we, uh, I seen this here, smitten of God, I never, it, it, it's, well, it don't sound just exactly right, but listen, that's exactly what happened because God's word says it happened. Amen. And he was smitten of God there, uh, and on the cross, God allowed this to happen because it was the only way. Amen. And uh, you know this morning how awful it was for God to see his son smitten. But listen, people, you know what you, you don't know for sure. I mean, you don't know, you don't realize what you've got when you have got a Savior like Jesus Christ. Amen. When you've got a Father like God. You don't realize how good he is to you. You don't realize what he went through in order that he might turn that curse of the devil away from you and you might be saved and that you might not have to go into a, a everlasting fire of hell and and be cast there in the lake Amen. of fire. And so listen, this is some of the things that happened here out there in that old dry desert that day. Now, I want you to look at in Numbers 20, and we're going to see the other side of this. Numbers 20 and verse 8. Well, we'll go uh, in verse 7. I'm sorry, in, in verse 7. 20 and verse 7. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the rod. I want to I wanna see. They are here again uh, in 20. Uh, they're gathered in this desert, and there's no water. It's the same situation. Amen. And listen, they, they should have learned it over here. But now you've got to remember that 40 years has passed since this time and since this time. They didn't, they heard the story, they heard the story of the manna, of Jesus being the bread of life and coming down. They understood him dying or know that he died, but now 40 years later, they've got the same problem. And these people are still living that they saw this. But look, notice uh, here, and there was no water in verse two of, of 20. For the congregation, and they gathered themselves together against Moses and Aaron, and the people chose with Moses and spake, saying, Would God that we had died when, when our brethren died before the Lord. And why have you brought up the congregation of the Lord into the wilderness that we 
and our cattle should die there. Do you see the, 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 same, the same old thing that the right. devil is using over and over, just like he does with us in our lifetime? He brings these things around about in a little bit different way, but he uses the same thing. He's fighting against God here. And he says here in verse 6, And Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. They fell upon their faces, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto them, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the rod. Now notice this, this is very important to me. Take the rod and get, gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron. He's brought Aaron this time. Uh, thy brethren, and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth this water, and thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock. So thou shalt give the congregation and their beast drink. And Moses took the rock, took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock. And he said unto them, Hear ye now, you rebels, must we fetch you water out of this rock? And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod he smote the rock twice. And the water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank, and their beasts also. Now, I want to show you something here about <clears throat> this rod that, that Moses used here. It was not Moses' rod. Now, you remember back when, when uh, they were raising up, uh, uh, they, was, they were talking about uh, Aaron not being the leader. And the, and the Lord, and I'm trying to remember where it was at, that I, that I, uh, uh, I, I number, I believe I got here number 17. I mean, let's see. <clears throat> uh, now, <clears throat> notice here in, in number 17, this is, a, this is the thing. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and take of every one of them a rod, according to the house of their fathers, of all their princesses, according to the house of their fathers, twelve rods. Write thou every man's name upon the rod. And thou shalt write Aaron's name upon the rod of Levi, for the rod shall be for the head of the house of their fathers. And thou shalt lay them up in the tabernacle of the congregation before the testimony, for I will meet with you. Now notice where they have put this rod. They put this rod... Uh, after they got through with it, and there's something special happened to this rod to identify who God wanted for the leader. <clears throat> and it shall come to pass that the man's rod whom I shall choose shall blossom, and I will make to cease from the murmuring of the children of Israel, thereby they murmur against you. And Moses spake unto the children of Israel, and they, every one, their princes, and gave, gave a rod of peace for each prince one according to their father's house, and the twelve rods. And the rods of Aaron was among the rods. And Moses laid up the rods before the Lord in the tabernacle of, of witness. Now, we want to see something over here in, in, uh, in, in, in Exodus, I mean in Numbers, <clears throat> I believe it is, where that this rod came from. Uh, he, Moses, the Lord told Moses to go get this rod. And I had it broke down here somewhere. Uh, but anyway, uh, you'll, have to, you'll have to look it up. It's in, uh, uh, it should be in 17 here somewhere. I'm, 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 and the number, just bear with me a minute. This is very important that you need to see this. Uh, okay, here it is. In verse 10 of 17, uh, of number 17, look at this. And the Lord said unto Moses, Bring Aaron's rod again before the testimony to be kept for a token against the rebels. rebels and thou shalt quite take away their murmuring from me that they die not. And Moses did so as the Lord commanded, so he did. And the children of Israel spake unto Moses, saying, Behold, we die, we perish, we all perish. Now it was because that the, where the rod was at and where the 
Aaron, that, Mo, uh, that uh, Moses went and got it was in the holies of holies and there was nobody supposed to go in there but the priest. Moses went in there and got that rod. And whosoever cometh by, now I'm, I'm still, I'm still not, I'm still not where I want to be. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Well, I can't find it. Uh, but anyway, this rod, God told Moses to go get that rod. He took that rod. It's 20 verse 8. 20 verse 8. Okay. Verse 20 verse 8. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, it is. And verse 7, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the rod, and gather thou the assembly together, thou and, and Aaron thy brother, and speak ye unto the rock. So it was, uh, this is not the one I'm talking about, but anyway, it, and Moses took the rod from before, here it is, and Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him, and Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock. So we, I want you to see this here, and, and Aaron thy brother speak unto the rock before thy, and it shall give forth water, okay? But anyway, this is, this is the picture. So when Moses went out there and he smoked the rock twice, he was, he was saying, he was saying <coughs> that a man that is lost, a man that is saved, can be lost again. Had it been his rock. But now his rod was the one that smoked the rock. His rod was the one that killed Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is not there no longer. This second time is Christ ascended to the heavens. He's in heaven because this is 40 years later. And uh, this is not having, I mean, but anyway, this first one, he killed Jesus Christ. The second one was he was to speak to him. Now, where, how, the, how is that to, uh, to come about speaking? Well, through the the atonement that Jesus Christ made to God uh, through his crucifixion. And now it is that we as God's people do not have to offer these offerings and, and sacrifices, but we can come to him and speak to him and pray to him and he hears our prayers. And so this is why I hear that God said to, to Moses, you speak to that rock, don't you, don't you smite it again. But what happened was that Moses let, let the people anger him so bad that he got beyond himself and he smoked the rock twice. But the thing of it was, God did not rebuke him there. God did not uh, refuse the people water because the water came out. Now the thing of it was, it's a tie, it's a picture of this this morning of us, listen, because because a lot of times we see things going on with people, <clears throat> listen, we're not to condemn them. God did not God did not condemn Moses to the thing saying saying uh, this, but he said the only thing is you're not going to get to lead the children into the land of Canaan. And so we we see this morning that a lot of the times when we do something that's disobeying God, displeasing to God, listen, we think sometimes that we're doing what we should do. Uh, it, you know, and, and, and we're trying to serve the Lord, and yet we're wrong. And that's, just, and, and that's what happened there with Moses. Moses, uh, God, did not, God did not say to Moses, hey, I'm going to kill you because you did this. He let him go. But the thing of it is, it's a picture to us that we should really realize when we put our mouth in gear, we better know what we're talking Amen. about. Amen. And when we criticize someone for doing something that we believe is right, listen, we're not right 100% of the time. Right. And we need to, to search out our own self and say, hey, listen, I need to pray for that person. I need to... Uh, ask the Lord to help me understand what he's going through because listen <clears throat> the 
the congregation and all that didn't know what Moses was going through. Moses was in a in a state. Listen, he the Bible calls him one of the meekest persons that ever lived, and yet here he is rebelling against God and doing something that God told him not to. Moses got in a shape that uh, he couldn't control, and mm -hmm. this is the same thing this morning with us. We as God's people need to back off. We need to back off. I'm telling you, we need to back off from this thing of criticizing people and saying, hey, you don't, you, you know, listen, God has given us something. And instead of criticizing, we need to be praying for them. Mm -hmm. that, that this morning, people, <coughs> in, in, in all, all of this, the most precious thing is that this morning here is that I seen that in, in the lesson that we are so we are so fleshly mm -hmm. uh, uh, guided that we don't understand where our manna is coming from. We don't understand. We don't understand half the time what manna was. It was the, it was Jesus Christ coming to this world and and giving Himself as the bread of life for us. But, you know, the people, the people went out and murmured. He said, hey, just gather so much for one day. And listen, we don't, we don't serve God uh, next week sometime. Today is the, the day that we should be thinking about serving God. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Mm -hmm. But that yeah. manna that comes down, that comes right there, and he said, don't gather more than you can eat in a day, except for the Sabbath. And what did they do? They gathered it all in a can and it soured and stunk and had worms in it. And that's sometimes we we try to get ahead of God. We try to get a whole ahead of him. And so uh, this is this is some of the things and, and I would that you would study these uh, these scriptures and uh, look at them. Uh, I think you'll get a blessing out of uh, of uh, what you see there and, and the Lord has helped me to understand more closely and more clearly what really has happened in, in, in this incident. So thank you this morning for listening to me and I pray that you'll continue to pray for one another. Pray for me as we try to uh, get something. Mm -hmm.